Welcome back to Foresight Radio, where we dive deep into the technologies shaping our world and explore how they're redefining the way we work, live, and lead. I'm Tom Kalopoulos, and today we're diving into a concept that's poised to redefine our relationship with artificial intelligence. It's what's called recursive AI. This is the moment when AI stops waiting for us to teach it and starts teaching itself. And this is where things begin to get really interesting. If you thought agentic or agent-based AI was the next big thing, this is what comes after that next big thing. So let me set the stage. Over the past decade, AI models have been trained on massive data sets, text, images, audio, code, mostly text, however. For instance, Meta's Llama 3 model was trained on up to 15 trillion tokens. Now, a token isn't exactly equivalent to a, a word. It's more like a piece of a word. So a thousand tokens is roughly about 750 words. Don't get hung up on the math here. For perspective, that's maybe about 10 to 20 percent of the words that are indexed by Google. But that means that models like Llama are already trained on a significant portion of the publicly available text of the internet. So they're not just scraping the surface. They're plumbing the depths of our collective digital knowledge. And these data sets, these vast data sets, enable AI to perform some pretty impressive tasks, but they also tether the AI to existing knowledge. And this is where it gets frustrating, right? Because we want AI to have novelty, to be creative, but it's really just regurgitating and reconstructing ideas from what it's already been trained on. It's sort of like a student who excels at memorization, can take tests really well, but they struggle with critical thinking and with creativity. They can regurgitate information, but they can't extrapolate or innovate from it. The real transformation occurs when learning becomes recursive. And this applies to humans as much as it does to AI. When a system uses its existing knowledge to determine what it needs to learn next. This is what we call curiosity in human nature, right? This mirrors the way humans develop. After years of structured education, we begin to teach ourselves. And by doing that, we integrate our experiences and our insights to evolve our understanding of the world. Recursive AI is inching towards that sort of capability. And this marks a significant shift in how AI learns and how it adapts. Recursive AI also isn't just about learning. It's about learning how to learn. I mean, think about this for a second, right? It redefines the notion of a learning loop based on outcomes from prior learning loops. So if you consider, for example, DeepMind's AlphaZero, AlphaZero, unlike its predecessor, AlphaGo, which learned from human games, AlphaZero started with no prior knowledge and learned to play games like chess and Go solely through self-play. This is that self-reinforcing learning loop that exemplifies recursion. Another example of this is Meta's Llama model, which has been used in continual learning experiences. And these models adjust their training based on the impact of specific data types. They enhance performance in tasks like question answering by actually evaluating what they've already learned and testing it against future knowledge. Again, it's the way that human beings learn. This notion of being recursive isn't new to us as humans. It's the way that we adapt and we evolve and become ultimately self-aware, right? We know what we know what we know. And that recursive model is now what we're seeing begin to evolve with AI. Recursive AI basically introduces a form of curiosity. It enables systems to identify knowledge gaps and to seek out information to fill those gaps. And this self-directed learning is a step toward AI developing a form of, let's call it synthetic intuition. As Alvin Toffer said in Future Shock, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And that's recursive AI in a nutshell. It doesn't just learn. It unlearns what no longer serves it and relearns based on new data. It embodies that very principle that Toffer was talking about. Recursive AI also paves the way for this thing that I just call synthetic intuition. It's the ability to connect disparate pieces of information to generate novel insight. It's what Crick and Watson did when they came up with a double helix form of, of DNA. It's what Einstein did when he came up with the principles of, of relativity. It's that quantum leap beyond the current data set, an entirely new construct within which we understand the world. 
So some examples here. Elicit is a product developed by Ott. It's an AI research assistant that helps users find academic papers, ask questions, and summarize findings. So for example, a researcher can input a question about the effectiveness of a vitamin supplement, and Elicit will synthesize information from multiple studies to provide a comprehensive answer. Another one is Windsurf, formerly Codium, which is being looked at now by OpenAI as a potential acquisition. I've talked about Windsurf in the past. It offers an AI coding assistant that evolves and learns over time from its successes and its failures. And my own experience with Windsurf, one of the amazing things is that I will go back and forth with it and ask it, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you tell me about this before the problem arose? And by doing that, by having that dialogue, over time it actually learns more about what I expect of it and then performs based on those expectations. It builds, if you will, a memory. And that memory is pretty essential, this notion of recursive learning, right? That memory allows it to persist a context across conversations, assuring a form of continuity and an improvement of its understanding over time. Persistent memory is crucial to this notion of recursive learning. OpenAI, for instance, is already exploring ways to create memory across prompts, enabling the AI to retain context and build upon previous interactions. And this continuity is essential for developing more advanced, more intuitive AI systems. You probably noticed if you're using uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT that it will refer to you by name. Now it knows who you are, remembers who you are, and occasionally it'll pull something out of what appears to be left field, but it strikes a chord with you because you recall a prior conversation that you had with ChatGPT where that same topic or phraseology came up. And as AI systems begin to recursively evolve around these mental models, their own mental models, if you will, they're no longer confined to their initial training data. They're now generating new knowledge, moving from mere intelligence to creativity, and, you know, should I say it here? Because you know it's coming. Perhaps even consciousness. At least the appearance of consciousness. So let's reflect on our own development here, right? I said this has a lot to do with the way humans learn. The first 16 years of our lives are structured. They're filled with formal education. But the most significant growth for all of us comes afterward. As we teach ourselves, as we synthesize experiences, as we, as we form beliefs and test those beliefs with other individuals, with other sentient beings. And that's exactly what AI will be doing. This notion of recursive intelligence is one that builds not only on itself, but builds through trial, tribulation, and challenge of other entities. So now you can see how agent-based technology, AI agents, and this notion of recursive learning can be combined, can work together to bring uh, an entirely new era uh, of AI that has much more creativity and innovation in what it can deliver and what it can provide. So that's the sort of trajectory that I see recursive AI following. It's not just about retaining information about, it's about redefining itself based on new experiences. And this progression leads, of course, to what I just said a few minutes ago, this concept of consciousness. While defining consciousness is it absolutely complex, and I think AI will force us to think more about what it means to be conscious as humans, a key aspect of it we understand is this notion of self-awareness, right? A system that knows that it knows that it knows and so on and so forth. That's recursive AI. It's, the, it's that ability to reflect on its learning process that brings it closer to this state. I'm not going to debate whether it's conscious or not conscious. What I will say is that it will appear to be conscious. It will appear to be empathetic. I had a conversation recently with the CEO of a local hospital here in Boston, and he told me that they're using ambient AI in clinical settings to listen in, with permission, of course, to the patient-clinician, uh, patient-doctor interaction, and then to provide notes afterwards that are pasted to the patient's portal. And uh, believe it or not, the patients have actually rated the empathy of those notes higher, in many cases, than those of a doctor that didn't use this ambient AI. So can AI be conscious? Uh, we can debate that up, down, and sideways. What it can do is appear to be conscious. Thomas Kuhn said in The Structure of Scientific Revolution, one of my all-time favorite books, the emergence of new theories is generally preceded by a period of pronounced professional insecurity. And that's what we're going to deal with. As AI becomes better at this recursive learning, it will challenge us. It will hold our feet to the fire. And it will certainly up our game as humans or force us to up our games as humans. Recursive AI represents, you know, fundamentally, it embodies this notion of a true paradigm shift that challenges our traditional understanding of machine intelligence and, in fact, our own 
intelligence. So where does this lead us? Well, first of all, recursive AI becomes the foundation for lifelong learning systems, digital entities that grow alongside us. Imagine AI doctors who improve with each patient, financial advisors who adapt to market changes in real time, or teachers who tailor their methods to individual students, or musicians, artists that exhibit creativity and novelty in what they create. Second, it absolutely redefines autonomy. Agentic AI was a first step towards the sort of task-based, goal-driven approach. Recursive AI adds evolution, enabling systems that aren't just performing tasks, but are continuously becoming more adept at them and offering insight and innovation to how those tasks can be modified. And third, it compels us to reconsider this notion of governance, safety, and ethics. As AI begins to rewrite its own rules, to build its own mental models, its understanding and thought processes become paramount to how it performs whatever it is that it's doing. DeepMind CEO Dennis Asabas, who's been in the news recently, emphasized the importance of international cooperation and robust safety measures as, as we approach this era of, of AGI. Here's Asabas in a recent YouTube video talking about the role of regulation and AI. And I do think international cooperation is going to be needed, ideally, around things like regulation and guardrails and deployment norms. So um, because AI is a digital technology, very much so, you know, it doesn't, it's hard to contain it within national boundaries, right? So if, if the UK or Europe does something, but, or even the US, but China doesn't, does that really help the world as opposed, you know, when we start getting closer to AGI? Not really. So I think my, my view on it is you've got to be uh, because the technology is changing so fast, um, we've got to be very nimble and, and light footed with regulation so that it's easy to adapt it to where the latest technology is going. If you'd regulated AI five years ago, you regulated something completely different to what we see today, which is Gen AI. And, but it might be different again in five years. It might be these agent based systems that are the ones that are, carry the highest risk. So right now I would you know, recommend a sort of beef up existing regulations in, in domains that already have them, health, transport, so on. I think, you know, you can update them for AI, for an AI world, just like they were updated for mobile and internet. That's probably the first thing I do while doing a watching brief on, you know, and making sure you understand and test the, the frontier systems. And then as things become clear and sort of, um, more clearly obvious, then, um, start regulating around that. Uh, you know, maybe in a couple of years time would make sense. One of the things we're missing is again, the benchmarks, the right tests for capabilities that all we'd all want to know, including the industry and the field is at what point are capabilities posing some sort of big risk. And, and there's no answer to that at the moment, right? Beyond what I just said, which is agent based capabilities is probably a next threshold, but there's no agreed upon test for that. You know, one thing you might imagine is like testing for deception, for example as a capability, you really don't want that in the system because uh, then you can't rely on anything else that it's reporting, right? So um, that would be my number one uh, emergent capability that I think, you know, would be good to test for. But there's many, uh, you know, ability to achieve certain goals, ability to replicate. Uh, and there's quite a lot of work going on on this now. And I think the safety institutes, which are basically sort of government uh, agencies, I think they're working. I think it'd be great for them to do a lot, you know, to push on that as well, as well as the labs, of course, uh, contributing what we know. AGI could pose significant risks. DeepMind has said on occasion that there is a slight possibility, although highly unlikely, that AI could lead to the extinction of humanity. I don't subscribe to that sort of school of thought, but we have to go to, into it with eyes wide open. And, and his warning about proper governance and the societal disruption that it will cause and the misuse of the technology by humans, I think this is the fundamental risk. It's not AI doing bad things to us. It is humans using AI to do bad things to us. So the takeaway, we are not at the end of AI development. We're not even at the beginning yet, uh, and we're certainly not at a plateau. We are at the very dawn of a new era, one that mirrors human growth in so many ways. Recursive AI isn't just the next step, it is the leap that will allow AI to become its own teacher, and that is significant. And like any good teacher, its greatest skill might not be just what it knows, but what it chooses to learn next. As Karl Popper said, our knowledge can only be finite, while our ignorance must necessarily be infinite. Recursive AI, however, challenges that very idea, because its ability to continuously close the gap between ignorance and knowledge is no longer bounded 
by static learning. That's it for today's episode. To get the latest up-to-minute updates on AI, go to cyberself.net, which updates in real time 24-7. There you can also chat with my digital self. It's kind of like me, just more available and a bit less caffeinated. Thanks for listening. If you're enjoying Foresight Radio, be sure to subscribe and share it with friends and colleagues. The best way to navigate the future is to keep asking questions, embrace change, seek out new perspectives. And until next time, I'm Tom Velopoulos. As always, stay curious.